Sir, now I'm doing my MBBS. Sir, you said that it was wrong to kill animals other than necessity, that is for target products, etc. So in the present day, a man can live very comfortable and healthy life by being a vegetarian. So do you think it's wrong to kill animal for just for the sake of satisfying our taste buds? Brother Prasanna has asked a very good question, very relevant question to the topic. When I said that you should not kill any animals, they are creation of life, unless you want for food, you cannot target practice. So why do the Muslims kill animals? You can lead a healthy life according to him, being an MBBA student. So why only kill the animals for taste? Brother, point number one. A Muslim can be a very good Muslim even by being a pure vegetarian. There is no verse in the Quran or Hadith which says you should compulsory fard have non-veg or have flesh. You can be a very good Muslim by being a pure vegetarian. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number five, verse number one, you can have all the animals which are lawful for you, all four-footed animals which are lawful for you, with the exception named. Allah says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number five, that Almighty God has created animal for you so that you can eat the meat. Allah says in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 21, that verily in the cattle is a sign for you. From among the body, you get a milk for you to drink. And from it, you derive warmth. And of the meat you can eat. So when our Creator Almighty God gives us permission to have these meat, why should we not have it? Now coming to your argument. That in this meat, you being an MBBS student, even I'm a medical doctor, I've passed my MBBS. And you being an MBBS student, you might have read, I don't know which year you're in first year also, you might have read that, that there are certain amino acids which are not synthesized in the body, which are known as essential amino acids. There are eight amino acids. Now these essential amino acids have to be given in the external diet. If you don't take in the external diet, it can cause loss to your body. No vegetable on the face of the earth gives you all the eight essential amino acids. No vegetable. The only food which gives you all the eight essential amino acids is the meat, fish, the flesh foods. Flesh food is rich in protein, rich in vitamins, rich in iron. It is healthy. But yet I do know if you want, you can remain healthy even by abstaining from non-veg food. You can. By having a proper diet and checking up and etc. You can. I'm not saying you cannot remain healthy. But when the food is healthy, why abstaining from it? The reason people give is that you're hurting animals, which will come to it later. Now, if you analyze the set of teeth of the herbivorous animals, the cow, the goat, the sheep, they have flat set of teeth. They only have vegetables. They will never touch flesh, never. If you analyze the set of teeth of the carnivorous animals, tiger, leopard, lion, they have canine set of teeth. They have pointed teeth. They only have flesh. They never touch grass. If you analyze the human being's teeth, if you go and look in the mirror, if I go and look in the mirror, we find that Almighty God has given us flat teeth as well as pointed teeth. If Almighty God, if Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us the canine teeth? Now you are a medical student. The canine teeth is for flesh food. So this proves that Almighty God gave us for having non veg food. Furthermore, the digestive system of the herbivorous animals, cow, goat, sheep, they cannot digest flesh. They can only digest vegetables. The digestive system of the carnivorous animals, tiger, leopard, lion, can only digest flesh. They cannot digest vegetables. But the digestive system of the human being, you being a medical student, know we can digest non-veg also and veg also. Vegetables also, flesh food also. Even flesh food. If Almighty God wanted us to have only vegetables, why did he give us the digestive system we can digest both? But natural to have it. Now coming to your question. That there is a misconception amongst the Hindus that the Hindu scripture does not permit them to have non-veg. I quoted the Quran. If you read the Hindu scriptures, brother, if you read Manusmiti, chapter number 5, Manusmiti, chapter number 5, verse number 30, 31, it says that if you eat the flesh of the animals which are meant to be eaten, you're not doing a sin because Almighty God has created some animal to eat and some to be eaten. Manusmiti, chapter number 5, verse 31, that if you sacrifice the animal, the sacrifice of the animal, you're not doing a sin. Manusmiti, chapter number 5, verse number 39 to 40 says that Almighty God has created certain animals to be sacrificed. So if you kill the animal to be sacrificed, you're not killing. Manusmiti chapter number 5, verse number 41, 42 says that a Brahmin who has knowledge, who knowingly sacrifices an animal, 
Even the animal goes to heaven and even the Brahmin goes to heaven. Furthermore, in Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 27, verse number 2, a person says that I'm going to go for war. When I come back, prepare for me a great bull. Furthermore, Rig Ved, book number 10, hymn number 28, verse number 4, it says that Indra, he says that prepare for me bulls to eat. Buffalo, bulls to eat. And if you read the Mahabharat, Anushasan Parv, chapter number 88, if you read that, this is also mentioned in Manusmriti, chapter number 3, verse number 266 and 277. Yudhishthar, he asked Bhishma, what should we give in the yagna, in the puja, in sacrifice, so that our ancestors will be satisfied? So Bhishma replies that if you give herbs and shrubs, vegetables, our ancestors will be satisfied for one month. If you give fish, they'll be satisfied for two months. If you give meat, they'll be satisfied for three months. If you give hair, rabbit, they'll be satisfied for four months. If you give goat meat, they'll be satisfied for five months. If you give bacon, for six months. If you give deer, for seven months. If you give birds, for eight months. And the menu continues. This is scripture of Hindus. It further says that if you give a buffalo for 11 months, and if you give cow for 12 months, and rhinoceros, inexhaustibly. So even according to Hindu scriptures, even according to Hindu scriptures, it gives you permission to have non-veg including beef. I am not saying this. All the references are there. You can check it up. It's absolutely correct. Now coming to the logical point of it, that why do the human beings have to harm the animals when we can live without eating non-veg. The reason people give that killing an animal is a great sin and killing a plant is a less sin because plants don't have life. This was the logic. Previously, Hindu sages and sons, they had non-veg, they had beef also, but they were influenced by the Jains of the Ahimsa philosophy who believed that plants have got no life, therefore eating a plant is a lesser sin as compared to eating an animal. But today you know and even I know that plants have got life. So now the logic has changed. They say, okay, brother Zakir, we agree plant have got life, but plant can't feel pain. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin than killing an animal. Today, science has further advanced, and you have come to know that even the plants can feel pain. The plants have a nervous system. They can feel pain. They can even cry. They can even feel happy. They even feel sad. But the cry of the plant cannot be heard by the human beings because the human beings can only hear between a frequency of 20 cycles per second to 20,000 cycles per second. Anything below and above they can't hear. You may be aware of a silent dog whistle. The dog can hear up to 40,000 cycles per second. So the whistle has a frequency above the human frequency, more than 20,000 cycles per second, but below 40,000 cycles per second. The master blows the whistle, human being can't hear, the dog hears and comes. So even the plants cry, but we can't hear. Just because we can't hear, that doesn't mean that we can torture them, if you say it's torturing. There was one person who argued with me and told me, that, but Zakir, I agree with you, plants have got life, plants can feel pain, but the plants have got only two or three senses. Animals have got five senses. Therefore, killing a plant is a lesser sin as compared to killing an animal. I told him, okay, brother, for sake of argument, I agree with you. Plants have got two or three senses, animals have got five senses. But suppose you have a brother, he's born deaf and dumb, two senses less. Can't speak, can't hear. When he grows up, somebody comes and kills him. So will you go and tell the judge, oh me Lord, give the murderer less punishment because my brother had two senses less. You, you will tell him, give him a bigger punishment. He was a masoom, he was sinless. How did he kill my brother? So Islamic logic doesn't work like that, two senses less or two senses more. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 168, eat of the good things we have provided you. What is good you can have? What is not good you cannot have. If you analyze that if you don't kill these cattle, life cycle of the cattle is very short. They reproduce very fast. If you don't kill the cattle for food, you'll have a problem of overpopulation of the cattle. The cow and the goat, they reproduce very fast. And if an Indian does not want to have non-veg, I've got no problem. If you don't want to have non-veg, brother, no problem at all. Personally, I'm happy. Because if all the Indians and the Hindus start having non-veg, then the price of meat will go high. My beloved brothers and sisters, this young man, he asked Dr. Zaki Naik why Muslims are allowed to slaughter animals and eat meat, eat non-veg. Then Dr. Zaki Naik has proven him that even scientifically, the human body is ready for eating, is good for eating both 
veg and non veg our tea structure says that we can eat both veg and non veg alhamdulillah when the non muslims have this type of question we should try to answer their question or we should take them to scholars who can answer their questions and it's good to clarify their misconceptions and it's good to enhance your knowledge even as a muslim we should increase our knowledge of this religion our religion is beautiful islam is beautiful so it's obligatory upon us to enhance the religious knowledge to get the religious knowledge so my dear brothers and sisters together with that give dawa to people share your knowledge with others rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said balligu anni wa law aya share even if it is a single verse from me so whenever you do dawa whenever you call people towards allah and if anyone accepts islam through your dawa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you abundantly so we need to give dawa to people we need to call people to the path of allah with wisdom and with beautiful teachings and we also need to have the best character and conduct because the non muslims they are not seeing islam they are seeing us when we have the best character and conduct it might inspire them or motivate them to learn about islam and to come into the folds of islam Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.